Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today we're taking a look at Atari's Missile Command by IDW. It's for 3 to 6 players, 30 to 45 minutes, and for ages 14 and up. It's made by our buddy John Gilmore and a Violet Hargrave, and it is a take back on the old uh, classic Atari Missile Command game. If you don't really know what that is, it's basically you've got your little cities you're protecting and then you're shooting missiles out to block other missiles from coming at you. You got planes flying over and those flying saucers and you're just doing your best to try and avoid them from hitting you, right? And blowing up all your cities. So in the game, you're going to get your own board. You're going to get your own little hidden uh, little screen here, which will hide where you're going to be launching missiles off. The game is interesting because you're going to be placing down cubes of everybody's color on your board to try and destroy their cities and they're gonna be doing the same to you and their other opponents if you ever match missiles with an opponent they'll kind of collide into each other as well as even nuclear missiles and you can use your interceptors to block the missiles from coming and hitting your base if your base gets blown up you flip it over and uh, see what happens it'll give you some um, mo uh, momentous uh, amazing uh, effect and sometimes it'll give you some like wah, wah, effect as well as you can even if you have a lower player count you can use the shields but the game is basically just a take that back and forth hidden style crazy game that does really reflect the theme of the uh, old Atari game. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here we have the momentous mi Missile Command by Atari and IDW. As you can see, there's a ton of stuff going on here. And we just went ahead and set it up for all the players because we're just going to give you a basic rundown. As you can see, you have each of every single player's uh, boards uh, as well as their little player screens. Uh, these are all the cities on each of their boards. Hidden here is going to be the spaces in which you're going to be detonating different missiles. These are all the cubes you're going to be using, which are basically missiles which you'll be purchasing throughout the game. And uh, you're just going to pick these guys up and place them on the things when it's when it's time, right? But everybody's going to set up just the same. Everybody's going to get fifteen dollar dues here. They're going to get their board in which they're going to be using to uh, throw missiles out or shoot missiles out. Their hidden screen and their revealed board, so everybody can see what is available to them. As well as everybody's going to be getting these cards here, which are basically cities. The rest of them you won't need. You can go ahead and get rid of them. You're going to have these additional cards, which are these little tokens here, which are shield tokens. You can, if you want to, increase the. Uh, <laughs> the length of the game by putting shields on all of your spaces so everybody has extra shields so when a missile comes and blows something up it only blows the shield and not the city itself up uh, in a lower count game it's definitely recommended these guys here are your currency these are your victory points you're going to gain these and they count as four whenever you blow up a building there's other times where you gain them at the end of the game as well these are nuclear missiles if they detonate they're nasty they're going to blow up the space as long as well as another space adjacent to it and these are your basic missiles and it's uh, missiles for each player of each color and and finally, you've got interceptors. These guys are going to block missiles that are coming to get you. However, they have a cost. Now, costs are all represented here on this missile command board here. It tells you the phases. you got the negotiate phase, the plan phase, the firing, and the collecting of the money. Uh, provided provided no one is dead. If somebody dies after phase three, then the game's going to end and you're going to tally up the points. you got resource costs. So missiles are two, interceptors are five, and nukes are ten. And then, of course, when you use city bonuses, the X phase will determine when that happens. So if phase one, two, three, or four, or immediately happens right now. Your currency will also be counted towards the uh, city if it blows up. For instance, this one will be like, okay, you get zero dollars um, during the collect phase, but you'll get two for this collect phase, but only once. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Now, what's going to happen is the first thing, which is going to be the, uh, I guess it would be called the, uh, the negotiate phase, which you're going to also be buying stuff. So he's got some money. I'll just show you how it works with just him, right? So he's got four dollars, and he's going to talk to people like, oh, who should I buy missiles? for you. Oh, don't buy missiles for me. If you buy it for him, I won't buy it for you. Okay, I'll buy it for him then. So I'll buy, you know, one missile or two missiles of yellow. And yellow's like, oh, you bought missiles for me? Well, then I'm going to spend my currency, you know, and I'm going to buy missiles for you. So then he'll buy currency. He'll buy missiles as well. And that's basically the idea. Once you've decided you've, you're, you're done, you can just stop spending and say, I, I'm, I'm done. I'm ending my my, my my buying phase, you can keep as much money as you want. You can choose to buy interceptors, which will block missiles. So I'm just going to go ahead and give him some 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 missiles to use right and we'll just we'll just put them over here and we'll also give him an interceptor and maybe a, a nuke there's no way he's gonna have that all that right now the first turn of the game because it's gonna be way too expensive but let's just say he was able to afford all of it we'll go ahead and discard all this into the pile and so after that happens and everybody has done that, then players are going to go into the plan phase, in which case everybody's going to have this hit. No one can see anything. And this player's going to be like, oh, I want to hit uh, purple here. And maybe I want to hit purple at the one space. And I'll keep this one for later. 
pink, I'll go for it four, but if yellow things, I'm going to go for him, uh, which means he's probably going to go for me. So I probably should put some, some, some of these guys down. So I'll put some of these on yellow and then maybe yellow, well, yellow will also, you know, do that. So I'll just use a little example of how it would work as well. Oh, he's already got some. Okay. So there we go. And, uh, well, who knows? We'll just pick some other one, other ones randomly with yellow here as well. Okay, and so everybody's going to be doing that, planning out their moves. Now, the missile can be chosen, and it count, or the nuclear missile counts just like a normal missile, but it can be blocked just like a normal missile, but if it doesn't get blocked, it does some devastating damage. It'll blow up a space and the space next, or adjacent space next to it. You can save the rest of these if you don't want to use them, and then, of course, interceptors are used after the planning phase, during the next phase when the missiles start launching. After everybody's done, everybody's going to flip over their player boards, then reveal them, and then you're going to look at the each space individually. So here we go. So all six all six of these would be revealed in a six player game and you would say okay uh this purple uh purple is being taken one one from uh from blue so does he have a, sp a a blue on his space on one and if he did they would collide and nothing would happen if not this one would actually blow up purple's number one space district one and in which case you'd flip it over and see what happens and it says, okay, phase one. During phase one, anytime any other player buys an interceptor, you gain a GDP from the supply. So you get one money per interceptor somebody buys. It'll flip over, and that's one space gone out of six. Then, of course, oh, here, oh, blue is being hit by yellow because yellow thought blue was going to hit him. So, in fact, blue would get blown up because um, blue didn't have a yellow here. And it would go on like that. Now, uh, that, that's basically the idea, right? But, for instance, here, blue and yellow are both hitting each other on the same space. So these both, 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 both of these would actually collide and blow up. Uh, but pink would also be targeted here. And so it's just a mishmash of craziness happening, things, things blowing up, right? And then after that is all done and all of these have been removed, because they're all going to get removed, uh, of course you cannot blow up if something that's already been blown up, but you could choose to hit that space again if you're trying to protect your own buildings by catching interceptors and whatnot, or catching other missiles and whatnot. After that is done, you're going to see if anybody died, if anybody has all these things flipped over. And if that's the case, you're going to start tallying up points. Now, every time you blow something up, you're going to get victory points. At the end of the game, for all the different pieces and currency you're going to have, you're going to gain victory points, and some of the cards will also give you victory points as well. If that's not the case, you go to collecting the money, and the currency is right down here. It says, okay, you get one GDP for the uh, first time this blows up. After that, no more. However, during scoring, you receive one additional victory point for every two money you have. So that's he's going to be the money guy. He's also going to get two, four, six, eight, ten dollars. So he would get ten. He would also get one from this one here, and then you put that in here, in which case everyone would do the same, and and it would rinse and repeat and people continue buying stuff. It's pretty simple, right? The idea is placing, buying and placing stuff down, uh, exploding, seeing what happens, and then if anybody's dead, the game's over, and if not, people continue blowing each other up. The interesting aspect, of course, is when you're buying these things, you can talk to each other. You can also choose to sell other people's missiles, because there's only a certain amount of missiles, so if you buy, end up buying up most of yellows, right, and yellow... Uh, is, you know, now basically the only person who can target yellow is you. You can say, well, I can actually sell you guys yellow's missiles for three apiece or for, for one apiece. It's up to you. I think I think missiles actually cost two. Um, but it, yeah, it tells you, right? Uh, yeah, two minutes, two, for, two GDP. So, uh, yeah, you could just do, do it that way. So it has a lot of different bargaining aspects to it. But that's the basic idea of the game Missile Command by IDW, uh, John Gilmore and Violet Hargrave. Let's go ahead and talk about it above. So a couple caveats now. You can only have one at each, uh, a single type of missile on each space. So you can have yellow here here and blue here and red here, but you couldn't have red and yellow here. There are cards though that make exceptions to that that allow you to place multiple different uh, missiles on different spaces that can actually protect you, even if you might not be trying to go for that target. Nukes are going to be uh, the same as missiles, however if they do hit they're going to blow up a space as well as a space next to it, and interceptors don't get placed during the planning phase, they get, play they get used after the planning phase during the fire missile phase, and in which case you're going to be uh, blocking a missile that will be hitting your, your target. So uh, the target. So if, let's say that blue went to hit pink on six, and pink didn't have a blue on six, so this is going to get destroyed. He could choose to use the interceptor here to protect his six space and keep it safe. Uh, that's basically how these guys work, and you can buy them, but they're more expensive than missiles. So yeah. Anyway, that is the basic aspect. I think I covered most of the caveats of the game. There's probably some extra little stuff as far as scoring goes. We can look at that in the rules of what if you want. Let's talk about what I think about it. Well, this game is what I would call the definition of a crazy, like fanatic, like fr frantic game. Uh, 
I, there's almost no way to protect yourself from dying. You're eventually going to have it happen to you. And no matter how much money you spend on interceptors, it's still going to cost you more to do that than to buy the basic missiles. Uh, the nukes are going to eventually start popping up. Um, they're very expensive though, and sometimes people don't want to actually purchase them because the little missiles do more damage. But these can be devastating if used correctly. Um, and that's the basic idea of, of how it functions. I mean, I, I, I think there's going to be a very specific type of gamer group that likes this. If you're fully into strategy and whatnot, the main aspect you're going to enjoy this game is the planning phase. It's what I really enjoyed the most of because I got to try and finagle my way out of being uh, bombarded by everybody by convincing people to not attack me by selling them different people's missiles or by having a bunch of interceptors with me, just staying alive. But staying alive isn't enough, so I didn't end up winning the game. What actually is more important is destroying other people's stuff. So you're always going to want to be on the offensive in this game. If you can be defensive as well, that might be beneficial, but it's usually only if you can place multiple pieces down in the same location. Otherwise, you're just trying to blow things up. Um, some of the cards are super cool. And that is kind of a negative for me because a lot of that, or some of them are, as well are not as good. And it's random as to what they're going to be popping up at. So let's go ahead and talk about some of them as, as to how they're destroyed. So you got the yellow core mine. This one says phase one, anytime a player uh, buys a nuke, you gain two gold from a supply. Well, if nukes aren't being bought a lot in a three player game, that's not very good. But in a six player game, it's amazing, right? Phase one, from now on, you may purchase nukes for $7. That's decent, right? Phase two, one, one player of your choice must set aside their radar screen. So that just is mean to one player, but it doesn't really benefit you in anyway each player successfully hit this uh, city may pay you three G oh, yeah any each player who successfully hit the city must pay you three GDP or two missiles uh, which is an immediate uh, action it will give you basically it might give you a bunch it might give you one or two you know phase three you may move one missile up or uh, down on the vector and gain one nuke and four missiles from the supply uh, the, the cards are just too random for me I mean <sighs> Sometimes I'm like, oh, heck yeah, I've got some great stuff. And sometimes I'm just like, wah, wah, wah. My, you know, my second to last city is gone. It's not going to give me any beneficial. However, the first city we destroyed of this you know, player A, he got like 20 GDP from just because, you know, random happenstance. So if you don't mind that amount of luck, you're going to like it. For me, that was... It just irritated me. Um, uh, the other phases, it gets crazy because when you're placing down the missiles and you reveal them, everything happens simultaneously. However you want to do it in whatever order is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six is how I do it. I think most people will as well. But it all happens simultaneously. And you have to keep track of where these all these missiles are going. So the more players, the more confusing it can, it can kind of get uh, throughout the game. And then the final phase, which is going to be the, uh, the collecting money. Uh, remember that certain ones would give you money based on the ones that are in front of you, as well as the ones that are already standing. And then uh, when you blow up a thing, you're going to gain the currency that tells you to gain, but only that one time and you're not going to use it again. So you have to keep track of that kind of stuff. It's not bad. It's, it's, it's really not that hard to do, but it's just kind of tedious, I think, a little bit. So I know it sounds kind of like I'm bashing a little bit, but realistically, the game functions like like the Atari uh, game does. You're the only thing that's different is instead of just you playing by yourself and the missiles are coming down, it's you and six other players that are all throwing the missiles around. So you have this big dome and people are going woof woof woof, and you're trying to like counterattack and espionage and all that kind of stuff. So it does have a special place in my heart. The nostalgia factor is there. Uh, the looks and feel of the game are there. And I do enjoy the, the planning phase quite a bit. I really like the fact that you're able to trade and sell. You're able to buy certain things. And what you buy is going to have influence as to how much you're likely to be attacked by certain players. You can say, oh, I'm only going to buy one missile from everybody. In which case, everyone buys a missile from you. So it's like, is that really worth it? I don't know. Uh, so anyway, it's up to you whether you think that Missile Command is something for you. If you like the original game, if you like Atari aspects, if you like John Gilmore's stuff, I think you're going to have a special place in your heart for this game. Uh, for me, I, I, I'm teetering on this one. It's something I'd probably play with a lot of players, but at the same time, it, it, it's just like there's so much going on. And playing with a few players, it, it's not as like enjoyable in that planning phase where you're trying to buy and sell from different people. So I'm like right there on the fence. Uh, so anyway, go ahead and check it out. And if it sounds like something would be interesting to you, go ahead and pick it up. Missile Command Atari IDW Games. All right, that's all I got.